A couple of years ago, I started making my own guitar pickups, and I put a couple of videos up here about them, but I wanted to do a new one because I've made a lot of pickups since then, and I've obviously learned a lot, and I feel like I've got a better looking product, and maybe a bit more organized in my process of putting it together. So I'm gonna share that with you right now. The goal for me has always been to make as much of my guitars in-house from reclaimed materials as possible. And the pickups here are an example where I'm making the bobbins from some reclaimed closet door scraps, one of my favorite materials. Um, you know, but some of my earlier pickups were more reclaimed than this one is now. And that's typical for me. I find myself... Uh, finding a balance. Um, so it takes a little bit of uh, finessing to get all the sizes right here But you can see I the trim rings I cut two because I'll glue them together to make them a little bit thicker and then uh, you know it took some guessing uh, to just get the right laser cut on the right sized hole so it would fit tight but not too tight to split the wood not so loose that it falls apart um, you know but once you got it you got it you know and you can see I also put little um, metal uh, ferrules in the bottom for wires. Uh, here you can see I added a little dab of whoops, <laughs> a little dab of super glue to them on the back. You'll see, and I also labeled in the corners uh, all the directions and the parts to just help make it easier for me as I go, because that'll all get hidden by a trim ring that you'll see later. Well, or you'll see now. <laughs> Here's an example of ditching reclaim to make a better product. I designed some base plates that I have cut by Sen Cut Sen from metal that I can thread, and it makes the whole pickup easier to put together and thinner, and I'm not messing around with like wood that splits with the screws going in and nuts and everything. And you see here also those Alnico 5 poles I put in. I wrapped with some electrical tape, some cloth electrical tape before I wind the pickup. This is the heart and soul of the pickup winding operation. Uh, there's bigger and fancier machines, but I bought this from Dove Canyon Studios on eBay. He's uh, just another person like us that makes stuff and sells it. And I like supporting little guys, and this machine does everything I need. You can see it has uh, two directions of winding, uh, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise. It has a counter built in, and it has a speed adjustment built in, and that's pretty much all you need uh, to make winding pickups fast and easy. Uh, and I'll show you my system. I always start by ripping a bunch of little pieces of tape off and sticking them on the side of my winder so they're easy to access when I need them to just hold down a wire so I don't lose it. <laughs> I don't want to be fumbling around looking for that. And I'm still using reclaimed wire for all of my leads. So you can see I've got a bunch of my old pinball machine wire I'm just stripping and getting prepped and ready for when I'm ready to go. And these pickups I'm using 42 gauge wire. Most of mine use 43 or 44 but this still uses 42. And I start by placing that spool on the floor and then running the line up to my machine. You see I had it just taped to the edge there. And then I use some two-sided tape for sticking my bobbins onto the spindle of the thing, but um, I actually stuck the tape on the wrong side in that picture. Uh, you see here, I, I fixed it and I put it on the top so I can access the ferrules on the back to run my lead through. First, I take my wire and I, I twist it up and double it over um, just to make it a little bit thicker and easier to see and work with as I get it started. So just a little bit of it that I can now slide into that initiating ferrule the um the positive side of the pickup see how much thicker that is uh and i use a little piece of that tape that i just ripped off to stick it down hold it still and then i set up my wind and i can start i use the machine some guys will do it by hand but i i just wind it very slowly and get a couple wraps around to make sure that that wire is tight and once i've done that now i want to set the width that i wind back and forth on my bobbin with these little stoppers so you can see i go all the way to the left Wind a little bit, see how far it's going, and I can see, oh, I can go just a little bit further over. You want to be careful doing this just so you can get a really effective and efficient wind going all the way end to end of the bobbin, but not too far over that you have mistakes and loops that slip and stuff. Then it's really just a matter of sitting down and winding, and um, you'll see with my right hand, I'm going back and forth side to side to sort of scatter wind, I think they call that, and just make the, the winds even, and I check every once in a while, like every thousand winds or so, I'll... I'll check and see if I've got a spot that's a little thicker on one side than the other, so I know I should, you know, oh, favor the left because I was favoring the right. Um, and for these particular pickups I'm making uh, for a bass guitar I'm building for a client, and they're humbuckers, and I'm doing the neck pickup with 6,000 winds per uh, coil, so it's 12,000 total, and then the bridge one is getting 7,000 per for 14,000 total. So, uh... Here I'm doing the, the first direction on the one, and then I'm gonna just keep my machine in the same winding direction and do that matching bobbin on the other side. So with humbucker pickups, you wanna wind one coil 
uh, clockwise and the other coil counterclockwise and then you wire them together like positive to negative um, so it's like this big continuous loop where it changes direction halfway through I guess would be the way to look at it and so that's why I have all these things labeled and marked because I want to make sure I don't mess anything up and um, I also use some tools to check and make sure I'm not messing anything up along the way which I'll show you when I get to it so here you see I just did my 7,000 winds for one coil on the bridge pickup and uh, now I'm right now I'm going to flip that direction and reset my counter so I do not forget that the next two I need to wind in the other direction. As you can see I'm still just taping down my loose ends. Uh, I haven't done any soldering yet and uh, now it's time to do a bunch more winding. I got two more bobbins to wind in the opposite direction. And hey, thanks to the magic of film, I am done, and it's time to uh, start putting these pickups together. The other thing about making humbucker pickups is the pole direction of the magnets had to be opposite. So if one half of the humbucker is south facing up, the other side has to be north. So here I just simply have two sets of strong magnets in between my vise, and I can pass these on the co-5 poles over, and you can see that was a southern direction, and then I flipped the other one over, and here you can see one faces north and one faces south. Um, and again, you just have to keep organized as you do this and check along the way. And now that I've magnetized all of those poles, and I did it by swiping it past those magnets about 40 times, I know I sped it up, I can solder on my leads. And um, I'll start by you know just soldering them on and checking them to make sure I have resistance, which I do. I also want to check the phase of the pickups to make sure I'm running the direction properly. I have this really cool tool from N Audio where you can connect it and touch the magnet with metal. You can see the phase of the pickup so that way I don't accidentally wire them out of phase, which uh, is easy to do. So you can see that I connected the, the negative feed from one side to the positive feed of the other, and I left a wire there so I can tap these pickups and turn half the coil off by grounding it out later. Uh, and then I can check consistency of the coils individually as well as the whole unit. And here I can see, whoops, I, uh, as I check with my phase tester from N Audio, I realized that I actually was doing it backwards. And I was like, oh, glad I caught that. It'll save me trouble later when I'm wiring the guitar up and the pickups sound weird when they're both on. And I did the same thing. I just check it all multiple times. And once I'm satisfied that everything is wired up and correct, I put a little bit of five-minute epoxy um, on each of the poles and the sort of really delicate parts of the pickup to make sure that they hold still. And once I've epoxied those on, I also epoxy on my metal base plates that I now make um, that are threaded and ready to go. And now, once that's all cured, I can dip it into my wax pot with some melted wax and uh, let it sit for a little while to sort of seal up. Let me add another quick update here on some of the other pickups that I've designed and built uh, in real time on this YouTube channel and show you where they're at now. One of my favorites is the Dump Diver, which is a neodymium, very modern sounding, come on, focus. Um, surface mount pickup, you can see it's very thin. It's made from closet doors, neodymium, and uh, 44 gauge copper wire. But what's changed since the video I made is, um, I still have these little mounting holes here so you can screw it down to something, but I also made it just a little bit bigger and there's a little piece of foam in there. So it's designed now that it can pop into the most acoustic guitar sound holes uh, and you could use it there as well because it is a little bit tall to surface mount onto a lot of acoustic guitars. And then another uh, favorite of mine and the, um, the sort of uh, internet here is my recreation of the $2 or the $2 bill foil, which is a recreation of the gold foil pickups is my little play on the currency. And I've, I've done a little bit, I've gotten a better look now to the way I place the $2 bill. And I have uh, these fiber etched uh, things that I put into my metal casing. And this is again, a surface mount. It comes with a couple risers um, and it surface mounts on a lot of guitars uh, and builders of course can build around it. But these are really great sounding pickups. Uh, I really like them. They're very alive, very vintage sounding. Uh, they have a, a ceramic core. 44 gauge wire and uh, you can learn more about both these pickups as well as some other ones that I make that I sell over at newperspectivesmusic.com back to the show back to this new pick. so soaking these pickups in wax helps fill in all the nooks and crannies and keep the pickup from sounding microphonic it makes it a little bit more uh, solid sounding I guess you could say and uh, <laughs> the hardest part is getting it out because it's all very hot as you can see that wax is uh, just about boiling it's so warm in there those are actually air bubbles coming out and so now I'm going to take advantage of it while it's hot um, since that metal's already hot, and I'm going to solder my ground wire, just a little lump of solder to connect it to the metal base plate, and that'll help keep things nice and quiet. Um, 
Now, once <laughs> that's cooled off and I can clean it up, I want to put these metal rings around there. And I just use a little tiny bit of 5-minute epoxy in the corners to make them tight and glue them on. And then I also want to just connect a little bit of that solder from the metal base plate. And make sure that all the metal is touching of that metal frame. Um, if it's not a solid connection, I can use a little bit of solder to do that. And now I go around again and, and check my consistencies to make sure everything is still working and functioning. And here you can see they look great. The humbucker base pickup on the bridge side is a little bit, the spacing is a little bit wide for these metal rings, unfortunately. So they're sort of right on the edge, but it still works fine. And then I also found that I just cut these um, springs in half for the humbuckers um, that sit in these trim rings. And that usually gives me enough tension without it being really hard to get them on. Uh, and that's the guitar I'm building them for. And that's, we can kind of see what they will sort of look like in there. Something typical in my process is I start with a concept and then I kind of walk it back into something that is a more practical reality. And one of the main concepts that I always start with is the sustainability and using as much reclaimed material as possible. So when I first started making humbuckers, you know, I was using nails and I still do that occasionally, um, you know, reclaimed nails and hollow core doors. And I was buying the new copper, but then I'm still using some reclaimed wiring here. And now what's it's morphed into where I'm actually buying a trim ring, um, you know, which is new. And I had send cut send. I made a couple different styles of these plates that I then tapped, uh, which are new material. And I'm using on this one, I'm using some new magnets. So it's not all reclaimed. It's like almost like probably like 30% reclaimed, maybe, maybe even a little bit less. Um, you know, but it's a viable product. It's a better product. It's, it looks better. It still kind of has the message to it. And, you know, it's just the way things kind of happen. It's like you start, you know, with this idea of like, you know, I'm going to save the world and you roll it back to, well, maybe I'll just save my neighborhood, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's, uh, you know, what's happened here as well with all my other guitar designs. I, I continue to try and make everything in the house as greenly as possible. And then I find out where those corners have to be driven over, you know, and where I can cut them and all that. And uh, I think that the end result here is a, is a pickup that would look just as ho at home on any instrument um, as it would on one of mine. Uh, and it is at least partially reclaimed, you know? So, hey, thanks for watching. Now I'm out of focus. There it is. Thanks for watching. Be good.